tonight. A Saskatoon mom accused of abducting her child and faking their deaths has pleaded guilty to three charges. One, two. Also, a Regina cheer team ends up in a legal battle with a German luxury company over one word. Plus, the final installment of our series about craft beer in the province, looking at the impact the breweries have in the communities around them. Some of their customers came out and helped us unload hand bomb 80 bags of malt. And that's just, it didn't surprise me. <laughs> that's true, it happened, yeah. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Thursday, November 2nd, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thank you for watching. A Saskatoon mother who pleaded guilty to kidnapping her own child, faking their deaths, and then taking off to the United States is not going to jail. Instead, Don Walker will serve a 12-month sentence in the community, followed by 18 months of probation. The case raised questions about how Indigenous women are treated by Saskatchewan police and the courts. Dan Sokreski brings us the story. Don Walker didn't want to talk about what happened in court today, but her lawyer did. I think the question here that we should all be asking is how we feel about how Indigenous women are treated in this country and in particular in this province. Walker pleaded guilty to kidnapping her own child last summer. She tried to make it look like they had drowned in the South Saskatchewan River, but really they had taken off to the United States. It triggered a massive search. It ended two weeks later when Walker was arrested in Oregon. In court today, Walker says she did what she did out of love for her child. She feared for her child's safety claiming she was in an abusive relationship. She says that she went to police, social services and the courts, but she was failed by all of them when they didn't charge her former partner. Hannon says Walker's case is not unique and that the system fails many Indigenous women. Something has to be done about the way the Indigenous community is dealt with in this country and in this province. You should know that in Saskatchewan, 80% of women who are in custody right now in jail are Indigenous. The prosecutor said Walker's motives and circumstances do not change that she still pleaded guilty. At no point in time has the Crown agreed in any way that uh, Ms. Walker was a, a victim from her former spouse or that her child was in any danger. I think the takeaway here by her guilty plea is an acknowledgement by her that she did not have a legal defense to these claims. The conditional sentence means Walker must abide by a curfew to 150 hours of community service and to get written permission to leave the province. She can still see her child, but the visits must be supervised. Dan Zakreski, CBC News, Saskatoon. A former Christian Legacy Academy official has pleaded not guilty to charges in Saskatoon Provincial Court. That means a trial is now set for next year. Joan Olabobakum pleaded not guilty on all eight counts of assault with a weapon. Ola Bobukum was a former principal at the school, which was previously known as Christian Centre Academy. His trial is now set for next June. He and another official are also facing four other charges later this month. Former students outside the courthouse today tell CBC they will be ready to tell their stories at the trial. The Alberta government's threat to pull out of the Canada Pension Plan has prompted the federal finance minister to call a meeting. Krista Freeland is hosting a meeting of provincial finance ministers on Friday. Today, in question period, opposition leader Carla Beck asked the government for its position on the issue. Beck says the CPP is secure and has been reliable for seniors. She says the Alberta UCP seems focused on pulling out of the CPP and asked if the premier was interested in following suit. Scott Moe did not answer the question in question period, but he did tell the media afterward that the government is not interested in leaving the pension plan. We haven't been looking at or even considering or had a discussion around uh, um, Saskatchewan exiting the CPP plan. We haven't been quite happy with the, uh, the, ca the Canada Pension Plan and how uh, it served the residents of Saskatchewan and would hope that would continue. That being said, there's a, an active discussion that's in its very infant, uh, infancy or early stages in Alberta and so we need to you know, watch uh, what is happening as any uh, province uh, can pull out at, uh, you know, if they should, should choose. 
The Alberta government has launched an ad campaign to sell its plan and wants to hold a referendum vote in the future. The plan has been criticized by business groups, labor unions, the Liberal government and Federal Conservative Party leader Pierre Polyev. 18 new addiction treatment spaces were unveiled by the government in Saskatoon today, eight of which are for youth. The new spaces will be here at Possibilities Recovery Centre. They will help people access intensive outpatient treatment in person in Saskatoon or virtually across the province. The government has added 80 new spaces in total this year. These 18 spaces are part of our province's commitment of adding at least 150 more addiction treatment spaces, a commitment that we recently increased to a total of 500 more addiction treatment spaces over the next five years. One of the benefits of it is that, you know, as an outpatient program, geographically, we're kind of limited to Saskatoon. So the virtual component of it gives us the ability to reach province-wide. So it does take, it takes a pretty committed person to have success virtually, and we have had success virtually. There are now 561 pre-treatment, detoxification, treatment, and post-treatment beds operated by the Saskatchewan Health Authority and partners. This expansion comes at a time where record numbers of people are dying from overdoses in Saskatchewan. In the first seven months of this year, the coroner's service says 291 people died from suspected and confirmed overdoses. University of Regina students and faculty members held a peaceful walkout today to demand an end to the violence that's happening in Gaza. First-year student Batul Abulela took part in the rally. Our voices play a major role. Just speaking about it, educating other people, the more people that are um, hearing about it, the more people that are sharing these talks, the more that people that can act are going to be more encouraged to. Because if not, if people, if the, if the people, like the citizens of Canada or the students of the university aren't talking about it, then higher people in higher positions aren't going to feel the need to respond. The students are calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. They also want the blockade of humanitarian aid, food, water, medical supplies and electricity to end. Net guards will be mandatory for Western Hockey League players starting tomorrow or as soon as teams can get the protective equipment. This comes after hockey player Adam Johnson died after his neck was cut by an opponent's skate blade during a game in England on Saturday. Neck guards are already mandatory in two other major Canadian junior leagues in Ontario and Quebec, but up until now, they haven't been required in the WHL. The Regina Pats will start wearing neck guards during tomorrow's home game. When you see something like that happen in the fashion that it happened, I've never seen an incident like that in all my days in playing hockey and in coaching. Um, it's just one of those uh, things like getting struck by lightning. It's very unfortunate it happened. I think it's a great uh, measure that we are doing and taking now to, to um, hopefully prevent something like that happening again. Johnson's death has prompted more discussions about the use of net guards, something that's not mandated in the NHL. Meanwhile, Regina Pats players say they're used to wearing net guards, having worn them until breaking into the WHL. Lots of people want to be a boss and portray a positive and empowering spirit. That's why a few years ago, two friends in Regina decided to name their cheer club Boss Athletics. But as Jesse Anton reports, trademarking that name has not gone as planned. What does a Saskatchewan cheer team have in common with a German luxury retail brand called Hugo Boss? One word, and it's put them in some legal hot water. Hugo Boss has sent Boss Cheer Athletics a cease and desist, saying their name and logo infringes on the fashion house's trademark. Hugo Boss sells accessories, shoes, fragrances, clothing, and even some athletic gear. Boss Cheer sells its uniforms and merch privately, mostly to their own cheerleaders. Their claims were fairly ridiculous with we didn't believe our brand was confusing to consumers. I don't think anyone would look at our you know, youth athletes and think, oh, Hugo Boss, but, you know, here we are. Hugo Boss has also reported the cheer team's Instagram page, causing them to lose access to their account and photos. Six years of our entire business, you know, everything erased, but it's so much more than the work we put into it. It's the memories for the kids, right? Their accomplishments, their achievements, you know, some hard times, some, some, some great times together is everything's gone. And, and this isn't the first time Hugo Boss has made headlines trying to protect its trademark. A small brewery in the UK, Boss Brewing, said it spent about 10,000 pounds or 16,000 Canadian dollars in court 
they ended up having to rebrand, which cost them another $33,000. Even though Hugo Boss don't have beers protected in their trademark, Hugo Boss have trademarked the word boss in 18 different classes covering items like condoms, bikes, carpets, and jams. Now, this story caught the attention of English comedian Joe Lysette. Because Hugo Boss hate people using their name, I'm changing mine legally to Hugo Boss. So Hugo Boss hasn't answered any of CBC's emails, but we did talk to a trademark lawyer, and they say... This is a pretty common dispute. From the outside, it can seem like a David and Goliath issue. And I think that would be the wrong way to think about it. Anyone who is trying to claim rights in the word boss in the clothing space has to know there is a massive multi-billion dollar brand already centered on that word. Boss Cheer has shelved its old logos, its old clothes, but it's still hoping to get its social media back. Jesse Anton, CBC News, Regina. If a winter camping in Saskatchewan's on your to-do list in the months ahead, you can now book online. Reservations are open for Cypress Hills Interprovincial Park, Echo Valley and Buffalo Pound Provincial Parks. You can bring your own gear or book one of Sask Park's yurts or tents. The window open is until March 15th and park winter programming will start in January. We'll be back after the break. The weather update is brought to you by Capital GMC Buick Cadillac 2023 model clear out is on now. Welcome back. Our weather specialist, Ethan Williams, joins me now. It's actually pretty nice outside, all things considered. Yeah, we've uh, seen some temperatures above the freezing mark today. Uh, dropping back down overnight, of course, means we kind of are in this weird freeze-thaw, <laughs> slippery sidewalk uh, kind of mess. But our current temperatures today showing that we are... Uh, kind of in a little bit of a, a different pattern depending where you are in the province. In the north, behind this cold front here, minus double digit temperatures today. Southwestern Saskatchewan though, getting close to double digit temperatures above the freezing mark. Maple Creek are high today around eight. And all of us in south and central kind of finding a home around the freezing mark or so, or just again, as I say, above that through the afternoon. Warmer temperatures in the southwest mean that uh, a bit of moisture moving through this afternoon actually fell as as rain in the Cypress Hills, Valmarie, and Shaunavan areas. High pressure did its best to clear things out in northern Saskatchewan today, and we see some thin cloud cover still there. Thicker cloud cover to the south, and it seems uh, along the Highway 16 corridor, including in places like Saskatoon and Yorkton, we did actually end up seeing the sun today as that cleared out a bit. But things clouding over again tonight, and even tomorrow morning, a little bit of a repeat scenario with some mixed precipitation in the southwest before another area of high pressure moves in. We're just going to do this whole thing all over again tomorrow. May get some clearing in Regina and eastern sections as we head through tomorrow afternoon. Things cloud over again Friday night into Saturday morning. Another shot of some snow in the Churchill region. And then the pattern really changes getting into Saturday night and early Sunday. This low pressure system from Alberta spilling kind of a mix of moisture. Rain to the south and central and northern sections. Possibly some snowfall as we head into early Sunday morning. Bit too early to tell what that's going to turn out as depending on where you are and what final totals will be at this point. And then another shot of snow to the north heading into Monday. Uh, now, overnight tonight, we could see some widespread fog. We saw that a bit in the Regina area, especially last night, but could be a bit more widespread tonight, dropping down to close to zero uh, visibility at times, even into early tomorrow morning. So heads up for the commute as that'll start to burn off as we head through the morning hours. Part of the reason we're seeing that fog develop is that there's just not really much happening in our atmosphere right now. Not a whole lot of wind to stir up weather systems. And uh, that is really going to be the case. These are very nice calm winds for this time of year. We don't really have to factor in much of uh, a wind chill here. Uh, the other reason that we're not seeing uh, a whole lot going on is because our uh, jet stream pattern not moving really just kind of forming a straight line here no big ridges or troughs and it's staying a bit to our south so that means we're still kind of in a bit of that cooler sector but as you'll see in our seven-day forecast for Regina the temperatures will not be bad as we head into the weekend 
and they'll warm up as that system moves in. But again, things likely going to be messy into Sunday before things sort of return to normal as we head into the beginning of next week. Saskatoon, again, similar story here, maybe a little bit cooler for you folks on Saturday. But Sunday, yeah, I expect uh, the commute to be not so great if you're heading anywhere. And then temperatures kind of evening out a bit here. So a blip on the radar, Sam, and then we're kind of just back to normal. All right, I will take it. Thanks, Ethan. You bet. I look at all the Saskatchewan Brewers as being one big community. Uh, we all know each other. We all talk to each other. We're all friends. Coming up after the break, the final part of our series looking at the craft in beer industry in Saskatchewan. It's called From Plant to Pint. And tonight we look at the impact that these breweries and their employees are having on the communities that they live and work in. We'll tell you about it when we come back. Stay with us. When it comes to your news, you want up to the minute access. Anytime, anywhere. Get the facts straight from the source. Download the free CBC News app or visit cbcnews.ca for news you can trust. Pubs have long been considered social hubs, but many local breweries in Saskatchewan consider their role in communities as much more than that. In the final part of our series about the province's craft beer industry, we look at the brewery's contributions to community. Three, two, Beer just has this long history of being a social thing. It's a get together, it's a gathering. Well, I think craft beer drinkers love getting together and trading notes about what amazing beers they've tried. They used to use the term, it's a, it's the every man's drink. I, we say it's the everyone's drink nowadays, I think is more appropriate. And we've really tried to buy into that. We think beer should be for everyone. We see beer as being something that is very connected to where we live. We would be closed without our customers, obviously, so we are very thankful for all of our customers. And not only are they keeping the lights on, but they are creating, creating this space. <laughs> very early on, me and Kelsey never wanted a classic bar idea, right? We wanted more of a chilled out space, you know, showcasing that you can run a place that sells alcohol that is, you know, maybe a little bit different than what Saskatchewan had seen before. It's almost unfortunate that we have to say those things out loud, I would say, but as a straight white guy, I understand that other people are experiencing things all the time that I'm not. So for me, it seems obvious, but it's not because people are still experiencing those things. So making sure that uh, at the very least that if people are experiencing those things, it wouldn't be happening in our business. It's important for us to be a part of the Pride and Pride Parade, and we did a Pride beer this year. It's part of your social license, really, to operate in the, in the city uh, and to be successful. You, I think you really have to be part of the community, and that means going out and doing stuff. You can't just sit back and say, I'm part of the community. If you're just in there spending high dollars on marketing and cramming what you're doing down people's throats, it's, it's not resilient. It's not fulfilling, from my perspective. Um, whereas being a community driver and a community builder gives you that higher sense of purpose as you're growing something and you're leaving a legacy, building a legacy. The first official day of the pandemic in Saskatchewan, instead of worrying about your own business, you were raising money for the Friendship Inn. Yeah, we had that conversation. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Why? Why do you do something like that? Because the right thing to do. I don't know. Because it felt good. You know, it, that was at a time when, uh, excuse me, you know, that, that was at a time when we didn't really know if we were going to be alive. 
And certainly, there were people in our community that, you know, especially visiting a soup kitchen, weren't able to get food. So you have these moments, I think, when you create a business, and we have that, had that moment as a brewery where you can do some good for people, and I think that's why you do it. Community is one of the things I think about, for sure. And the Comus is, you know, they're in their community. They uh, bring lots of people to their community. I look at all the Saskatchewan Brewers as being one big community. Uh, we all know each other. We all talk to each other. We're all friends. Malty is super interesting because they're in Regina, but the feel of community there is incredible. The last two times I was there for deliveries, some of their customers came out and helped us unload hand bomb 80 bags of malt, and that's just, it didn't surprise me. <laughs> That's true, it happened, yeah. Nice guy, he came out, he was having a beer with his dad and they were both farmers, so we were, we were talking and then the, uh, the dad was talking to Matt about farming and the son came out and hauled some bags of grain. We gave him some free beer and yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, that's, yeah, that's community. It goes back to kind of that connection of uh, making something, making our product, growing it, seeing it come up through the year, hoping for the rain, like doing everything you can to, to make it the best that it can be. You're putting like kind of like the blood, sweat and tears in and then the beauty is you're handing it off to someone that you know that is just as passionate about their end of the equation. Those people with their passion, they become friends. We try to be relatable ourselves. We try to be here in the community. You can come into the bar and sometimes I'm here behind the bar. I'm maybe not the best bartender, but I'm here. You can't do that with mass-produced global products. You know, we, we laughed in the pandemic that we were considered an essential business. You know, making beer is essential. But, I, but we did embrace that, yeah, that level of social fabric, that sense of normalcy, that um, joy, the ability to have families come into our tap room where the kids have some apple juice and mom and dad have a beer. Those are important things. Those are important things on how we build community together. <laughs> That was the final part of our series on Saskatchewan's craft beer industry. You can read all about it and watch the rest, including parts one and two, on our website, cbc.ca slash sask. And Ethan's back with one last look at your weather. No green fields in this forecast. No, uh, white is pretty much uh, what we're into now, especially as we head in uh, through these next few days here with what the forecast could bring. But for Regina tonight, there is uh, definitely the possibility that by midnight we could see a little bit of fog building in again. Winds will be fairly light, and that's, again, part of the reason why that's happening. A midnight temperature of minus 7 uh, will be at minus 8, not too much of a change by the morning. And there still could be some uh, patches of fog kind of here and there. Should be gone by the noon hour, though, will be at minus 1 good chance we'll climb above that freezing mark just above it in Regina once again. A little bit of fog possible in Saskatoon as well tonight. By the morning hours again that should primarily be gone but we'll be left with mostly cloudy conditions around minus 7. Again light winds by the afternoon here a mix of sun and cloud. There is the possibility we could jump just above freezing again in Saskatoon and this whole weather system kind of just repeating itself again Sam. All right thanks Ethan. You bet. And that is it for us tonight. For news anytime, you can always head to our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or download the CBC News app. Ethan and I are back with more tonight at 11. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night.